Hello, my name is Nick Deborah. I'm an independent data visualization and dashboard design educator and consultant. And in this short video, I'm going to introduce a chart type called box plots. So box plots are useful when we want to compare distributions of multiple sets of data. For example, maybe we have some salary information from a dozen companies. And so each one of these numbers is the salary of an individual employee. And we wanna see how these companies compare with one another in terms of their salaries. And so a box plot is one of the ways that we can do that. And so this is what a box plot looks like. If you're not familiar with box plots, let me tell you how they work. So I'm gonna use one of those companies as a starting point and plot all of the employee salaries in that company on this, it's called a strip plot. And so each one of these dots represents an employee. And so this is the highest paid person in our company and this is the lowest paid person in our company. And so I can see the range of salaries and that most of the people are kind of clustered around about 150,000 a year. So the whole range of this distribution is called the spread from the highest to the lowest value. And then just for fun, I'm going to find the midpoint of this distribution. And so this is the point where half of the employees make more than this amount and half of the employees make less. And so if you have any training in statistics, you probably know that there's a name for this. It's called the median or the 50th percentile. And then again, just for fun, I'm going to take that upper half of our distribution and split it again in half, which gives us what's called the 75th percentile. And so in this case, if I had 80 employees, 20 of them would fall above this level and 60 would fall below. It's called the 75th percentile because basically 75% of the values fall below that level. And then I'm gonna do the same thing with the bottom half. I'm gonna split that in half as well, which gives me the 25th percentile. Now I'm gonna take the distance between the 75th percentile and the 25th percentile and represent that as a box. I'm gonna then represent the upper 25%, also called the first quartile of values with this, which is called a whisker. And same thing on the bottom, I'm gonna represent the range in which the lowest 25% of values fall with this other whisker. And then I'm just gonna repeat the median with a black bar here. So this box shape with the whiskers basically summarizes this distribution. And what this particular shape is telling me is that most of the values are tightly clustered around the median. They're not very spread out. But if my box had looked like this, this would tell me that in fact, these are very dispersed values. They're very spread out. They're not clustered around that central median. Something like this would tell me that the values fall mostly in kind of the upper end of this range. This would tell me that most of the values fall within the lower end of the range. And so I can actually get a fair amount of information about the general sort of shape of the distribution of these values using boxes. I would never use a box plot to show just one distribution though. Where they become really useful is when I want to compare multiple distributions, multiple sets of values. So coming back to our earlier example of companies, this would be what those values would look like as a box plot. And so right away, I can see things like, for example, uh, what the company with the highest median salary was, which companies had wide ranges of salaries, narrow ranges of salaries. So very good for comparing multiple distributions. So as I mentioned, I can see the range of values. I can compare medians. There are some limitations to this though. For example, box plots make all of these sets of distributions look like they have what are called bell-shaped or normal or Gaussian distributions. And yet that's not always the case. We don't always have values that are clustered around the median. We can have, for example, what are called bimodal distributions where you actually have kind of clumps or clusters of values at, at different levels. And those would be kind of hidden uh, by a box plot. But I think that the main concern that probably most people have with box plots, including me, is that they're simply not very intuitive. Depending on what kind of audience we're dealing with, what kind of environment we're operating in, people may not be familiar with these. And if they're not, they're gonna require that explanation that I just gave a moment ago. So unless the target audience for your chart has a fairly kind of statistical background where they're familiar with concepts like quartiles, for example, I often recommend instead using something called a frequency heat map. And so this is showing actually the same values that we were just looking at a moment ago. And the darker colors basically represent higher concentrations of values, in this case, different salary levels. And so I can see that here in company H, for example, most of the salaries are fairly tightly clustered around 
that sort of 40 to 60K range. And for company E right beside it, those salaries are much more dispersed. They're not really clustered around a central media and central point. And so certainly in my experience, people tend to find these much easier to understand than box plots, unless they're familiar with box plots already. I can still show multiple sets of values as I can with a box plot. And one of the other advantages that it has over box plots is that it makes non-bell-shaped distributions like company J here actually visible. I can see that there are actually very few employees around the median of this company salary. There seem to be really two groups, a group of highly paid employees and a group of employees making less than 20K, which could be important in this case. Now, one drawback of frequency heat maps is that they're not very precise. For example, it can be hard to see actually what is the median in each of these distributions or what is the maximum or minimum value, what was the spread of each of these ranges. And so I could potentially augment it a little bit by maybe marking off the medians if I felt that that was important for the message that I wanted this chart to convey. And I could even maybe add things like the highest and lowest salaries. This is starting to get a little bit busy. I would really want a very good reason to be able to do this. However, if I need that extra precision, I could potentially augment it in this way. But usually that's not necessary. The median is often sufficient. So I hope that you found that that was useful and interesting. If you'd like more information about many other chart types, this video was actually part of a course that I teach called Practical Charts. If you'd like more information about taking the course, please visit my website practicalreporting.com. Thanks for watching.